when I think of why I do love you as an artist, as a friend, it's because you are such a, you love this country so much. Mm. You support our troops so much. And obviously, when I was on the air in the 90s and beyond, I played your music a lot. You did. Awful Beautiful Life, I Miss My Friend, Have You Forgotten, all number ones. And Have You Forgotten was number one for seven weeks. And I usually don't wow people with stats about themselves because there's really nothing to say about it, except huge significance that this is the 20th anniversary of the song. Most people think it came out right when 9-11 happened. Oh, I know. I I found that. Of course, I never thought that, but I'll be talking to people and, and they... They throw it, they lump it in with, you know, uh, Toby's song and, and Alan Jackson's song. And I'm, I just wait on them for a minute because they always get their eyes like, no, wait a minute. And I'm like, no, it didn't come out until 2003. Um, they, Why the lag time in the song? I'm not a, I'm not one of those, I'm going to write it tonight, guys. Mm-hmm. So I, I really didn't see that event as being something that I would just jump on with a song for fear, you know, that people might say, oh, boy, that's timely that you, you know, you know what I mean. Right. <clears throat> and if I'd known, they're going to say that anyway, <laughs> no matter what you they do. They said that anyway. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but the honest truth is I, I, I just have to let things simmer for a while, you know, and, <clears throat> and I was kind of living through that time period. I was looking at our, our people and, and this nation and thinking, boy, it didn't take us long to just get right back into the same groove and almost like we forgot everything that's happened. It was just, and then I got asked to go overseas and, and, and entertain the troops, which was like a dream come true for me. I, I, I almost joined the military three different times. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, so uh, the journey to Afghanistan in 2002 was one of the most life-changing events I've ever have ever I've ever been a part of and <clears throat> it uh it changed me in a, in a lot of different ways uh, one of the biggest things that I realized was that I'd grown up around this military family thinking because I'd grown around, grown up around all these people that I knew all about this stuff and that <clears throat> and that it was you know just just part of our heritage and but man you got to see firsthand going you know and i and and i was very blessed i won't go deep into this but we didn't just travel with uso um we had a, a uso um affiliate it was it was affiliated with the uso but my tour that i went on year after year after year was was with the sergeant major of the army who goes there for a specific reason and that is to go where the fighting is getting done and find out what those guys need that's what his job is and on the very first day we were in country he was setting up his plans for the following day and he came to me he, and i had one other guy with me on that trip <clears throat> and we both had flat top guitars acoustic guitars and uh, he said we would love to take a couple of guys with you with us when we do what they call short hops they go out from the from the big base, they take a helicopter and go out to these places I'm talking about, where he needs to see what's going on and, and help them get what they need. So I told him then, I said, for as long as we do this together, for as many years as I come back, and in as many war zones as you want us to go to, you don't ever have to ask that question again. You just tell us when to be waiting on you, and we'll be waiting in, in the morning. And it was like, you know, sometimes 5 a.m. or whatever, and that's not meet up at 5 a.m. and go have breakfast. That's get on the bird and take off. So, mm-hmm. well, And we just did it day after day after day and year after year after year. And so what we saw was a little bit different than just hanging out with the USO. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so many of my family members served with some of the same outfits that we would go visit, and I'd just be like, so this is... This it's, is what war was like for them, or what it. Wow. There were some of them serving at the time. I saw family members almost every time I went. That's crazy, <laughs> isn't that nuts? Yeah. And so it inspired. Have you forgotten? And it wouldn't have made a difference to me or when either one if 
if anything would have ever happened with that song. We didn't do it for that reason. We, mm-hmm. we wanted to write it, and we talked about all the different influences in our lives and, and, and how we could just have, an, we just had an opportunity with a song to say, thank you, uh, we recognize you, uh, and we will not forget you. Mm-hmm. When we started thinking about writing a new uh, version of the song for what's happening in our nation 20 years later, I, I mean, I thought, wow, you know, now I'm having to really analyze myself mm-hmm. in this. Because if I'm going to write this song, and Wynn and I had these discussions. And <clears throat> Wynn was your original co writer. Co writer, yeah. So I went right back to him and I <laughs> said, and I honestly didn't know if I wanted to do that, do that or not. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm thinking, I don't know, you know, you take that. I said, that's my crown jewel. I don't want to like scuff it up or give it a black eye. Right. I, you know, and, 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 and I think Wynn was a bit of a, a voice of reason and say, you know, and basically saying, here's our chance. Well, it, 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 you know, Noah Gordon came to me and it was his idea. We didn't have this idea. I don't think we would have ever had this idea because who's going to go back and, <laughs> you know, what are we going to do? Try to better a num- seven week number one? Right. <laughs> I think leave it alone, uh, let it rest. But, uh, you know, one of his remarks to me was, if you guys do this and you do it right, and you do it from the hearts that I know that you have, it could be something that could, uh, you know, really be bigger than it was before, possibly. Uh, but more than that, he said, it, it could be the most righteous thing that you've ever done. because, mm. and, and we talked, and he and I said, I said, the title would have to be, Have We Forgotten? I mean, and the change is uh, I'm putting myself in there, too. I'm not pointing my finger at anyone. Right. Which we did a little bit on that first go around. Yeah, um, talk about the new, the different. I love the, the difference in you and we. Like, yeah, it's just all, I mean, is it the most righteous thing that you think you've done? You know, I, I just believe that in the past 20 years, when we looked at ourselves, we, we, I said, it, you know, I ain't going to put, I ain't going to put this old win, but. But I said, without anyone's help, you know, I've done my share of stuff to be part of this problem, which I have. You know, I'm a hard-headed. No. Sometimes I think I probably know more than I do. Uh, I know that I don't listen. Do you say that to your wife? Sometimes. It, it, it's good for our relationship. Yes. I don't say it a lot. Right. I don't say it a lot. I couldn't do that. Because you're <laughs> right most of the time? Is that why? No, because she would think I've changed. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd have to be consistent. <laughs> Who's this guy? What's wrong with uh, you? She does say that a lot. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Look, the subtext of this podcast is the Nashville truth. And everybody oh. is, their truth is different. I mean, I just moved back here. It's been such a part of my, an ongoing part of my life. Sure. And so I always ask people, like, what is your Nashville truth? Like, you are one of those guys that had such a unique story. And I think the last time we were together, we talked about, like, how the stars aligned for you. (laughs) But how they sometimes don't for some people. I think one of the most unique things about my journey was that it started so late, you know, and I tell people this all the time. I was 35 years old when I signed with DreamWorks. That's crazy. And they thought I was 25. Yeah. I'll never forget it. And so <laughs> my manager, Ted, goes, well, just don't say nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, too. I said, no, someone else had already told. Look, when I go uh, on dates, I'm going to say, I just don't say nothing about it. <laughs> we don't need to talk about how old my kids are. Can I see your license? Yeah. I was completely a different thinking guy than someone that would come in at... 22, 23 years old, and and just take whatever they g- yeah. offered. Yeah, so totally more savvy. Different. You well, worked your ass off too. Absolutely, and in, you know, in, in clubs and honky tonks. That and and I had a whole nother, you know, set of skills and and worked. Uh, you know, I I worked in the chemical industry to support my my addiction of country music on oh, the that's weekend. Funny. I really did, you know, and I. So I could buy good gear, and we had the best, you know. I, and I, I played, I put bands together all over the South and Southeast, wherever I was working at the time. And I'd, you know, I'd be there for a while, and then I'd, I'd go somewhere else and work in these paper mills. And 
so yeah, I had, you know, I'd, I was used to sitting down at a table with a bunch of the guys from the technical department and negotiating a six or seven million dollar a year uh, contract for putting, you know, chemical programs in their paper mill. And uh, we started doing all that stuff over DreamWorks and there. And I just acted like I was just dumber than a rock, you know, because I thought Wynn was my roommate. And he said, just be, be, just play your cards close to the vest. Don't let them know who you are and, and, and you'll find out a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we did that. And long story short, I, got, I wound up getting a great deal there at mm-hmm. DreamWorks. It took a long time because yeah. I just would, there's certain things like control comp. I don't know if you're aware of what that is, but I just learned a lot and, uh, you know, I knew I had to to be savvy and, and because I figured it ain't going to be too many years until they're going to figure this age thing out because I'm, you know, running up and down the road. Mm-hmm. I mean, I came here to write songs. I didn't really care about the record deal. I figured my time was past. So having that opportunity was a beautiful thing. What do you credit? I mean, I know you alluded to just it is timing. Did they need a tall, good-looking guy? Did they need a super deep voice? I, it was, you know, what was I, what I were think the? I was different. I yeah. think I was different. Oh, I think for the, sure I think the music was different. I think my voice was different, and I think my voice was recognizable. And uh, that, I, yeah, I think that's a huge piece of it. I live on Broadway, <laughs> and I spend some time in the honky tonks now. Like people, a lot of people in the business don't. Right. Oh no. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing so many up and coming artists, and I always would love to be a fly on a wall. You're in a honky tonk. You see somebody that's really talented. They know it's you. They come up to you, Daryl. What's the real truth about me being able to make it in Nashville? If I do this, if I pay my dues, if I work my ass off, will it pay off for me? And in a very, to summarize, kind of the Nashville truth. What would you say to them? Mm, I would say, I, I I believe there has to be some raw talent, you know. Uh, even though I I do know some acts that that have done very well that didn't maybe didn't have a ton of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you work your ass off and you work in the right ways, that can you make just about anything happen. I really do believe that. I would not say that to to someone young that that if I didn't believe that. But someone that had, you know, a natural gifting toward that. Mm-hmm. And and then I would say young man, young woman, write songs because what I learned so fast in this town and uh, and in Muscle Shoals too is that any obstacle that you run into a great song can plow right over the top of that. And it makes a difference if you're writing them yourself because when you're coming in brand new, these songwriters that write them every day, they're not going to go, well, I can't wait to give a song to that guy because he don't know who you are or, what, or what's going to happen to you. Mm-hmm. So I got my deal because of five songs. And That's then by the time they got through overanalyzing everything, they didn't want any of those songs on the record. I'm like, ah! I, just, I went to the house. I said, oh, y'all call me <laughs> when y'all get ready to do this because I'm just, just... That's wild. Uh, just, they didn't use any of the songs? Well, no, we did. Yeah. I wouldn't do it without it. I oh, said, yeah. that's what y'all signed me for. And I said, it's getting so far away from what I wanted to do. I said, when y'all, you know, when you guys get your hearts right, call me, but I'm just going to go write songs. Cause, oh, damn. And there was hardcore. But there's some great songs that, that would have probably not made that record had mm-hmm. I not stuck to my guns. You have to. Right. You have to stick to your guns in this town, but you have to pick your battles because if you win every time, you're not going to last long. Mm-hmm. And there's so much more about this politics and stuff that we could talk about. It's it's not, you know, the biggest takeaway for me even in the past couple of years and also talking to everybody on the podcast is you can't really be mad about it. It's kind of life. Oh, no. And you just, to your point, you just, you got to do your thing. That's right. And that's what I have done. I mean, I found out, you know, within five or six years that I was not ever going to be like the uh, favorite son of the CMA mm-hmm. because I was too old for that, first of all. They couldn't take me right out of college and groom me to be the favorite son of the CMA, uh, like Brad Paisley. Mm-hmm. Great example. Yes. 
Well, I figured that out, and I thought, okay, then I should quit spending money buying them dinners and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is a waste. This is a waste of a good tomahawk steak. No, listen. There were some great people <laughs> there, and I still love them. It just, you know, I just, I just realized, yeah, that's not that's not part of what I need to be working. Uh, you know, spend your time and energy on other things that will make you the most headway. Yes, and, and that's what I did, and and I'm still doing that. Yeah. And and you know, it's different now than it ever has been. Uh, you know, the internet took a lot away from us. A ton. Well, how do you mean? Record sale. Oh yeah, of course. Well, the I whole would probably business. Probably be some. You probably wouldn't be doing this with me right now. If well, the whole business. Listen, sales. talking to Mitchell Tenpenny last week. Like, yeah, we were oh, yeah. talking about, and he, like you, it's not his first rodeo. Right. He was raised in the business, yeah. um, and he understands it in a way. I mean, it, we got really deep in the weeds about okay. the significance of radio yeah. and how labels are changing. And, you know, what I didn't ask him, this would be a good question for you, is about in some ways as an independent artist, you have a great opportunity to make it now like you never did before. But we were talking about, so I'd love your thoughts on that. And then also um, just in general, why radio still matters. Well, Let's do that one first okay. because it's it's easy. Uh, radio still matters, mainstream country radio, if you will. It, it still matters because, uh, you know, as a songwriter, that's where I'm going to make that money. Mm -hmm. Performance money off the radio airplay is insane. That's exactly what Mitchell said. Yeah, you like, can't. There's no replacement for that. Yeah. So basically, you know, when you take away the record sales, <clears throat> and then radio starts playing ten or twelve artists over and over all day long and nobody else has really got any kind of a shot at that mm -hmm. at getting any of that airplay mm -hmm. guys like myself go okay you took record sales away now you're taking uh, radio performance royalties away what do i do i tour sell merchandise and try to build a big following on the internet yeah and pray that one day 40 million streams will be worth more than 10 grand and that's the truth that's the that un is, unbearable truth of it all. It's, that is the Nashville truth. It is the Nashville truth. And and so it leaves you uh, lots of room to be bitter. And I refuse to do that because no, I've got a 15 year old daughter and, and a beautiful wife and, and, a, and a good life. And so I have to stay gone a little bit more than I would like to, but we're doing great. So And I haven't been to the farm yet. But I'm dying to go oh, you need to come because down. we share a love of Highland cows. Oh, they're they're talking now about getting into the standard size instead of just the minis. His wife has mini Highland cows. Yes, she just got two more. I and can't. I'm obsessed. You wait till these them. babies are born. I mean, they're just teeny tiny little things. Like and, how big are the minis? Uh, like full grown? Yeah. You know, she tries to keep them under. 39 inches, 30, 36 to 38 inch tall. You oh, know? my God. These big old horns sticking out. They're, I mean, in the big furry faces. And the pictures are amazing. I post Those about pictures, them all the time. So the crazy thing is I would see these, you know, uh, decoration type pictures on people's walls in their house. I didn't. This is two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a real hot thing to have those hanging around your house. And and I'd see, I'd see them and I'd think, boy, they made that cow look really weird. <laughs> and, and I didn't know it was a real. And, and my wife goes, "You idiot! That's that's a Scottish Highland." And I said, "What?" <laughs> I interviewed <laughs> Riley <laughs> Green once, and he's like, they're, "That's an urban legend. They're not real." <laughs> I'm like, "I think they are, dude. I'm pretty no, sure they are." Trust me, I've got I've got more of them than I need. They are real. And you know what's funny? Well, I can take them off here when we, I get a little land. <laughs> we found out that that that. Those cows came from my people. They didn't come from Scotland. They were, they were. Who were your people? They were take, uh, the Danes, the Vikings. The Viking, oh, they took them over. To that, you know, they were going everywhere. And you could be on a Viking show. Why? I want, I want to do that. I really do. Now, see, I haven't told. I've only told like one or two other people in the industry that I really want to do that. And I wanted to be on the, the original Viking series so, so bad. So good. And I was too busy. But I'm telling you, 
I could pull it off. I feel like you could. I could pull it off. I can. I can. What about I the can, accent? I can mimic you lose? any. I can, can mimic you, any. Let's hear. Let's hear. Can, all right, bring I can it. Do Scottish. I can do. So I, to to do a mix of all that or Scandinavian mm-hmm. would be easy. Some of the guys on the shows are horrible at it. Oh my gosh, Beth from Yellowstone is British. That blew. That shook me. She sure is. I was like, what? She sure is. She's in and a really she's good, good. What is there a show like she about Vikings good. or um, that she's in that I was like. It's a great show. Um, oh, yeah. Where oh, it's like I think I think I know what you're talking about. I might have watched that. Mm-hmm. But well, I, when the first time I ever heard her talk normal, like her in her accent, I was like, because I'd only heard her exactly. I was like, man. All right, bring me a give me a give me a Scottish accent. Uh, no, I can't. I'm not real good. It's I'm good at how about Irish? Good at Irish. Oh, I, I, I don't know what we got into last night, but it looks as if we took first and second. <laughs> I think that might be Scottish. It's a mixture of both. <laughs> you know, my mother's from Ireland. No, I didn't know that. And she still talks with an accent. Oh. She'd be like, that's the third time I told you that, Kelly. Oh, my God. It, I love it. Yeah, but I think totally you should. I, I want to be your agent for that. Like, Oh, come on. Because you've got the look. I would give any. Well, I mean, it, if you knew the worldly, the, the the heritage of that name, it is... My daddy, you know, he was a pastor, so I started digging all this stuff. I couldn't take it anymore. People were telling us, you know, where where our name came from, and it was always something different. And I thought, there's got to be a reason why it's always something different. When when I started digging, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, uh, they came to the, you know, the Emerald Isles be- mm-hmm. long before a lot of that stuff even started over there. And, and the Vikings just went oh, wherever yeah, they-, they wanted to and— Set up camp. Absolutely. And and a lot of times they would, you know, run people off that were already there, but keep their wives. Have you watched so, Last Kingdom? Is that Uhtred of Bevenberg? Yes. Oh my God, that's my yes. favorite too. All right. Um, so I, all that whole thing love it. you're talking about, love it. I, I would, I'd give, love it. I would give anything to do that, and I really believe that I could. You gotta manifest I think that it's shit. A little bit late. So no, that's like all the I mean, guys. I don't are, think they all, would, There's so many old guys on. There, there really are. Yeah. I mean, they're still fit and stuff, which is I, I can handle yeah, that yeah, part of exactly. it. Exactly. So uh, I just, I just think you know, with my stature and 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 Outlander. I, I, there's a bunch yeah. of. I love oh, Outlander. Trust me, there's there's a bunch of it. This I watch is my it jam. I know. Same. <laughs> we found, not only cows. <laughs> My dad, my dad's like, you love this too much. He begged me to stop digging up bad stuff about her. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me tell you the first four worldies that came to the United States, three of them, there's a long, long, long line of pastors and ministers and men of God, clergy in my family. You're doing this for your dad. I'm telling you the truth. But the, so the first three were brothers, good. they were, were good ones. They, were, they all set up Lutheran churches here in the United States. One of them still stands in Withful, Virginia. Nice. And we've been to it. Nice. It was, it was established in 1798. Nice. The fourth brother, the fourth brother was Richard Worley. Look him up. Bad seed. He's the most notorious, one of the most notorious pirates that ever lived. And he was, That's cool. Well, yeah, but I mean, you I mean, know, other than the dad, plundering, other than he the plundering horrible. and the pillaging, there was a lot of that. He was horrible. If I told you the whole story, you read, you read it for yourself. I can't do it on here. <laughs> that look was like, there was a lot of that. It was a lot of that. My there dad's was so like, much plundering and pillaging. My dad's what like, are you that's do? you. <laughs> <laughs> You're Richard. Oh, that's yeah. Hilarious. So so I started then. I'm like, hey, where did this guy learn to sail? So I just started <laughs> digging, and I paid a lady to to help me. Like like a interesting fact. Um. The sheriff of Nottingham was a Worley, but he wasn't really a Brit. He wasn't. He, he came from. So I had I had all these ancestors that that's in, pretty cool. Infiltrated the UK. Uh, one of them even helped William the Conqueror take the UK. Like wow. in 1052. You love that. Look at him. He's like, yeah. Well, only for a few. They didn't, Suck it, they didn't, William. They didn't keep it very long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they Don't got the old up. monarchy together and got some dough piled up and they hired a bunch of people to come in and run them out. But they, they took the UK for a while. This wow. guy's name was Wallace Whaley. And he had this, this William the Conqueror had basically hired him to uh, take charge and run all of his troops. And he changed his name from Worley to Whaley because they knew Worley was a 
why aren't you writing this movie and stuff? starring in it? That's like it's such stuff. a great. It's amazing. I, I, I think about the. I want the pirate story out, and then you got to play him. Oh, Richard. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, Richard. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want. We all know what the short <laughs> nickname for Richard is, <laughs> which makes no sense. It, he <laughs> may have been the OG guy. <laughs> Let me tell That's you. when we started calling Richards dicks. That's funny that you say that. Yeah, it started with Richard Worley, uh, <laughs> the OG guy. So the most probably the most. Famous, you know, the most um, uh, most talked about pirate was either Blackbeard or or uh, the Jolly Roger. Yeah. So you're gonna love this. <laughs> when I dug this up, I about passed out. We try to find his pirate flag. What do you think Richard Worley's pirate flag would be? Please tell me it was a Highland cow or a so guitar. It's just a little skull, uh-huh. and it had these crossbones coming out, you know, out from behind the skull, like this. The skulls in the middle. And I looked like at that. Like the norm, that's the norm, what? I looked at that, and we were dr- drinking. We were drinking, of course. And me and my acoustic player, and I said, look, he's an original son of a gun. And, and we started laughing, you know, and stuff, and we, we scrolled down, and it really was his the original Shut skull and up. crossbones flag. Check this out. No one else would fly that same. Now, they would use the skull and the crossbones, but so the Jolly Roger is a skull. But it's got crossbones underneath the skull. Oh. No one would fly that same one. Look it up. You won't believe it. Most He's, importantly, which one does Kenny Chesney use? I don't know. <laughs> he should use Richard Worley. He thing. should. But anyway, long story short, he he uh, he was kind of the OG. The, the Jolly Roger. That's said, crazy. The Jolly Roger said, I've patterned my whole career after R- Richard Worley. That's crazy. That and I told it to my dad, I said, there's that's good stuff, and he goes, no, 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 I don't like that guy at all. He's he was terrible. Uncle Dick, wow, <laughs> Uncle Dick. <laughs> I should have known your this dad, would come to this. Your dad you know, is an Uncle Dick hater. He didn't care for Uncle Dick at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Now I hear how it sounds. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I thought you might. That's why I went ahead and. You just wanted to repeat it. So. Back at you. <laughs> so you understand. <laughs> so you've um, learned a bunch about. I love this. No, I want to write the story, and I want you to star in the movie. But I would. I would do. Uh, I would definitely do a Viking movie. I, that would just to me would be. Oh, it's like we we need to do like an <laughs> Uncle Dick movie. <laughs> We'll start with Uncle Dick. But it's like Uncle Buck, the pirate. I don't know. There's something. <laughs> We're workshopping this out loud. Um, I, I got to wrap up. I feel like we could talk forever. Oh, but yeah. the other thing is you are, anybody coming to Nashville, anybody living here, you're doing the Opryland Christmas show with we your are. friends. And you do kind of have the <clears throat> the tall, skinny Santa vibe going on, too, with your, <laughs> your big beard. That's what made me think oh, about the that's beard. funny. I, I I told my wife, she told me the other day, she goes, You're I can grow a beard. I mean like a it like by tonight. In just a few months. He's yeah. like humble brag. No, but in a few in a couple months it's it's Duck Dynasty. And my <laughs> wife and my wife goes every she February rolls it. around, she's like, It's gotta go. Something's gotta give, you know, because it's just and and I, she said, you're not wearing that on the stage at the Opryland Christmas show. I so believe she did not use that voice. I'm going to have to keep it. I believe you made up a voice that was like. Oh, well, it's kind of like. You're that. not wearing that. She just she told me that. She said, like you're, not, you're, not putting, you're not putting me through that. It's, you're going to be groomed. And, mm-hmm. But yeah, we got the, we, we landed this Gaylord Country Christmas show at the Opryland Hotel. It runs uh, like from Thanksgiving through Christmas. Every night. That's great. It's, it's uh, the Oak Ridge Boys had it last year and the year before. You get it for two years. Oh, that's great. So we'll be there this year and next year. And you're having your friends. And have a guest a guest every night. Really? Corey Morgan's doing it. Uh, Billy Gilman. I swear Billy that. with uh, with with Andy Griggs. They're they're very close. Oh, that's great. And they're coming. And um, who else? Billy Dean. Oh, uh, oh uh, Dina Carter, the Isaacs, who I am absolutely crazy about. They're just phenomenal talent. Um, all these people will be, you know, sharing the stage with me. And and, uh, and it's, you can get the tickets at that big, long website. Yeah. I'll put it Opry, up on there. Yeah. You, you probably. Yeah, I'll put it up. It's, it's long. What's your go-to <laughs> religious Christmas song and your go-to fun pop song? 
I do uh, the, kind of a short version of Oh Holy Night. Mm, that's the toughest one to do. It's a, it's a tough song, but I tell you what, I did it a lot when I was young. And uh, I don't even do the whole second verse because, to me, it says the important part right up front. Um, and I and I truly believe in all of with all of my heart that that that's what's missing in our world. Mm-hmm. And so I don't make any bones about that. And that'll be part of our show. We we that's like the Rockette show. Have you ever been to a Rockettes? Uh-uh. No, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. It's interesting because <clears throat> in this. PC world we're in, they really do a whole, I was kind of, especially for New York, I don't know why I placed that on there, but I went, oh, wow, we're going baby Jesus. We're going baby Jesus on this. Did they really? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, they get real, it's. Well, we're going to go baby Jesus on Daryl Worley. (laughs) Yeah. And and you know, and you know, when I I was, I told Julianne, I said, we have to make that clear that I can't do Christmas without Right. You know, that's, that's without the true meaning the root of word. Christmas for the me. The root word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't give me that X word. I don't yes. do that. Um, and they were thrilled. Good. They were. They said, yes, of course. And yeah. I was like, yes, I, I didn't know. I mean, you never know. So. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It'll be. So uh, we'll see you doing that. And, I, and the poppy or whatever, you know, that's not the Christian thing. We, we do. Um, I love doing chestnuts i love doing it like you know it's kind the thing we did is just like me and the piano and a little bit of violin oh, wow. and it's just that and it's kind of you know like it's a, it's old blue eyes or dean martin kind of vibe mm-hmm. with that song i love that and Sweet. but we do let it snow and um then i have the, i love um winter wonderland i like that song Sleigh bells too. Ring. i like that song too i don't know if we're gonna do it or not um I don't know if you've heard the advertisement, but Opryland opted or Gaylord opted to use my my original Christmas song. It's called "Just Around the Corner," and they're just wearing it out, you know, advertising That's this. That's awesome show. for you, a, right? When you hear it, when we wrote this song, I said I want to write a song that sounds like a classic Christmas song, mm-hmm. and it really does. That's amazing. So when you, it's all about being out on the road and trying to get home for Christmas. Oh, perfect. Christmas is just around the corner, another mile or two to go. Her arms are, my arms are waiting just to hold her. Can't hardly wait to let her know that her smile and her sweet kiss are just a couple of the things I missed. I'm getting closer and Christmas is just around the corner. Aww. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it'll be good. Well, I can't wait to see it. I love Oh, you got to come out and hang. You've got to get a little one of your little mini cows to be in the manger Bring it up scene. On stage. Let yeah. it poop every night. That's yeah. awesome. They, no. they love that. Oh, yeah. Especially at the hotel. I they can be love your it. handler. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, you're right. We could put For a, whole a manger, manger scene. scene together. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Work on that. Well, I, I bet you they'd be big into that. Oh, my God. It would be huge. <laughs> Maybe we could just have. Little wax characters instead of bringing the real. No, you have to have one of your Highland cows. <laughs> Just that one to make it look real. All right. Okay. We got to go. We do. Daryl Worley, thank you. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Love you too. You're the best.